Now in general, um, clavicle fractures may be treated conservatively or operatively. Um, it depends on the demand of the patient and on the fracture type. So there are gross displacements, shortening, let's say then more than two centimeters, I think a good indication to offer a surgical treatment. Having spoken about that, the fracture morphology also decides whether uh, what type of technique, whether an intramedullary nail is an option or open reduction is a better option. So in general, it depends on patient's demand, it depends on fracture morphology, displacement, shortening. If you decide for open reduction, um, it may not sometimes be so easy to get an anatomical reduction. Just imagine you have these butterfly or even multifragment um, pieces in the fracture area. You want to bring it into shape. I sometimes use mini screws to temporarily fix it and to bridge plates over that. So shaft fractures with comminutions are a challenge. In general, one must say the lateral clavicle fractures may be a challenge too because you only have a few small fragments to anchor your implant. So in the old world, we had uh, the hook plates to um, achieve that. Um, nowadays, we have other techniques to do this. I think both is true. We apply techniques we have learned in our training. And the anterior plate replacement, a uh, plate, sorry, plate placement, um, was not a favorite thing we did. We sometimes did it in revision cases. Um, so yes, it's a philosophy. When you collected good experience with the superior plate placement, maybe you stay with that. Um, however, there are technical differences. My choice to stay superior is I don't like the detachment of musculature, which is in sportive patients sometimes quite a bit you have to release. Um, Having said that, it could be that in slim ladies, let's say, a superior placement of the plate is much more bulky, um, so it disturbs, whereas the anterior plate placement is slim and is a good option too. So finally, the set comes up with many options um, we're just offering. The objective means the characteristics and the, the special features we have included into that system. Now, first of all, as I've said before, we have different um, types of plates. The plate should always be in the middle between a, um, of a fracture. So you have mid-shaft fractures, you have lateral shaft fractures, which is, depending on the anatomy, quite frequent, and you have lateral fractures. Now, in this step, um, we addressed a new set of plates. So now we have uh, um, developed a mid-shaft plate, a lateral shaft plate, and a lateral plate. And in addition to that, the anterior plate placement. So there is a, a large set of different options. And just to mention also the mid-shaft uh, plate, which most frequently would be taken, appears in three different curvations. So if the anatomy really varies, you're not depending on bending these implants. Most of them fit as they are. And if they don't, be sure that your reposition is done anatomically, because that could be the reason why the implant is not fitting. But um, you have many more options than I usually had in the past years, and I hope this more individual um, shape of plates will fit better and we don't need to bend implants. Well, at that point, I'm part of the developer team, so I'm happy that we come up with a set uh, where I'm convinced um, people will see the advantages, will see the new options, and most likely will appreciate. So yes, I'm happy with um, what we have at the moment. But of course, we will stay critical, we will use it, and I'm quite sure, having done a large series of patients with implants, we have something to improve.
Now this plate system adopts the Trilog. So we have polyaxial stabilization possibilities, which is a big advantage. I take the best piece of bone to get my implant anchored. That is no doubt. The next thing technically spoken is we have smaller drill holes than competitors. So I guess we will have or experience less pathological fracture through a drill hole, um, which is an advantage. And further, we have developed new anchoring techniques in the lateral plate shape. So in addition to angular stable screws through the plate, we have in a 90 degree angle to that AP um, screws, which are mentioned to be or are meant to be an anchor of the lateral fragments. And as the newer techniques and developments go um, through the coracoid anchoring, we have included into the plate the possibility to have this, whatever type of suture you prefer, to fix it in the uh, plate. And I think this is a very nice um, addition uh, or add-on to, um, to the set. Missing. Okay, now well, we are collecting experience with the new devices and uh, as I mentioned from one of the cases I have um, operated or one of the patients I have operated on, um, the olive wires are very nice for the reposition but I would like sometimes a little bit longer K-wire to get a little bit more distance with my drill but these are, you know, things you have to find out. One thing I would like to mention, because it might be felt as a problem, in contrast to torque uh, range measurements of a screw in screw system, the Trilog system is a little bit more dependent on the quality of bone. So the resistance of anchoring depends also whether you have cortical bone or cancellous bone. In cancellous bone, you might experience to overdrill. You, had, you have to get that feeling for it. Whereas in the shaft bone, with the cortical bone, you have a high resistance and that is a difference and you have to get used to it. But once you use it, you will find out it's not a big problem. A preferred plate. You know what my preferred plate is? The one fits best. So it depends where the fracture is. Is it in the mid shaft? Is it in the lateral shaft? Is it lateral? I take the plate that fits best and that's my favorite. But to be honest, the lateral plate has the newest features, so it is a little bit our favorite. I already mentioned the K wires with the olives to help us, but there are also dimples where you can anchor your forceps, your reduction forceps, on the plate and you're not slipping. So it helps you really to set the plate on the bone, to keep it there. And sometimes you need to use the plates for the reposition when you cannot achieve direct reposition. So this is very helpful, not only in the CAT lab, we have just trained it again. I found it in my first surgeries also very helpful and a nice tool. So um, this is something new uh, and I appreciate it. Uh, to be honest, I'm a little bit old-style surgeon, so I use the hook plates, but I also experienced some problems with that. So I believe that was also part of my training, um, that the hook plate in grossly displaced lateral fractures, where you have small fragments, is something that is um, necessary to maintain the position. I have seen in my own patients dislocations of the hook, I have seen erosions and uh, it always causes pain. Everybody is waiting to the time you can remove them again. So I believe, and there are biomechanical investigations um, to really show that, that the coracoid bending as an alternative, I'm not talking about the Bothworth screw that is static, that is something we don't like to do, but um, the coracoid bending, and this can be anchored in the lateral plate very uh, strong, will be a good substitute for the old hook plate. So I don't see a necessity for hook plates in the future anymore.
To be honest, um, I don't have a complete overview about all implants um, from different companies. I think um, most of them are angular stable now. They are anatomically pre-shaped. Um, I personally have with a good standard implant, Synthes Depu, a lot of experience. They, have, they still have the monoangular stable plates. They have the rotated plate for the anterior and the superior um, screw placement, which is very nice thought, but in my hands I experience it doesn't fit always well. These are very strong implants, which is a benefit, but once you start to need to move them to shape them, it's a hardship. So um, even if I like Synthes very much with implants in other areas, um, here, I think improvement was necessary. Um, the polyaxial angular stable screws, I already mentioned, I think is an advantage. And uh, the number of different plates. So um, comparing it to competitors, um, yes, I more or less switched now to this technique we have now. And I already mentioned the smaller drill hole we need with a 2.35 millimeter instead of 2.8, I guess also it is a positive or a, an advantage. Um, many of these patients are young and sportive. So I don't believe that they need physiotherapy in a, in a large series. Maybe some of them should get uh, recommendations, but I think that's not so important. It's more important to restrict them because they ask you, how early can I go back to my soccer playing or to my mountain biking or even fight uh, sports? So I say contact sports, fighting sports, leave it away for half a year, whatever implant you have. But um, sports you can start um, after your control, after six weeks, usually we have an x-ray control. Restrictions. Usually not. I tell the patients the first six weeks move below the horizontal just for them to remember, okay, here maybe it's too much, but there is no biomechanics background to really justify that. It's just a memory for them, you know, go half uh, the first six weeks. Talking about plates, as I said, usually I use a superior positioning. It sometimes is disturbing for patients, particularly when they have a back sack or a bag. Um, it's bulky. These are young patients, so they ask for a movement. And to be honest, maybe half of them have them long term. The other half wants to get rid of them. So that is a small surgery, but it is a surgery need to be done. Um, how long? Well, usually we don't see, we can't really evaluate whether the bone is stable or not. We see whether it's loosened the implant or whether it fails. That's what we can see. So I would prefer rather go long and that means 18 to 24 months. So I would not recommend somebody to get the um, plate removed earlier than one year.